Okay, good morning to everybody. Um, this is uh, Pandian, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Erod Singular Engineering College, Perundurai. Um, today, we are going to discuss uh, about the cogeneration. So, the contents of the presentation is we are going to discuss about what is cogeneration, the need for cogeneration, the principles of cogeneration. Then uh, cycle analysis of the cogeneration, then applications of the cogeneration. So these are the topics that we are going to discuss today. Yes, what is cogeneration? See, it is the combined generation of heat and power. In conventional thermal power plant, the efficiency is only thirty-five percent, and remaining sixty-five percent of energy is lost. So the major source of loss in the conversion process is the heat rejected to the surrounding water or air due to a, the inherent constraints of the different thermodynamic cycles employed in the power generation. So normally for uh, thermal power generation that we are using the Rankine cycle. Okay. And this is the thermal power plant. Okay. So it has the pulverizer where the coal is pulverized into the powder form. And it is supplied uh, to the that is a boiler, okay, where the gas is collected in the gas copper, and the heat generated due to the burning of the coal is used to convert the water into steam. So that what that steam is taken, okay, that steam is taken to the turbine where uh, the heat energy is being converted into mechanical energy, and that mechanical energy is being converted into electrical energy by coupling the alternator with the turbine. And then the power generated is distributed to that the um, through the distribution systems. Okay, and the exhaust steam from the turbine is taken into the condenser, so where uh, it is converted into liquid water. So by means of secreting the makeup water or the cold water from the cooling tower, and the water that has been circulated to the condenser takes away the heat from the exhaust steam, and that makes the uh, condensate into liquid form. And uh, the hot water, that is the heat absorbed by the hot water, is taken into again to the cooling tower for recycle purposes. Okay, and then the condensate is taken to that the feed water pump where it is pressurized, and then the pressurized water is taken into the boiler again for conversion into steam. Okay, so here the hot gases produced in the boiler is taken into that the precipitator because the there are two types of the gases. One is the bottom ash and another one is the fly ash. And the bottom ash will be collected in the ash copper, whereas the fly ash, along with the gases that is going through the precipitator, where the um, there is a powder form of the gases, uh, that is a powder form of the, the ashes will be collected in the precipitator. And only the gas is allowed to pass through the chimney. And again here, the through the chimney, the hot gases are leaving. And the, majorly, the hot gases will be at the of the temperature of around 300 to 400 degrees Celsius. So, such amount of heat energy is lost through the chimney. And again, here the exhaust steam that is also containing that so much amount of heat energy. So, that can also be tapped for uh, some other useful purposes. So, that is the okay. Here, in the case of the thermal power plant, the main aim is to produce the electrical power. And the sub aim or the the okay the other part of uh, that energy is to make use of the heat that is being lost without any useful purpose. Okay, so that is the cogeneration. So here the principle of cogeneration is it is a generation uh, cogeneration or the combined heat and the power is defined as the sequential generation of two different forms of useful energy from a single primary energy source so typically mechanical energy and thermal energy okay so mechanical energy may be used either to drive an alternator for producing electricity or rotating equipment such as motor compressor pump or fan for delivering the various services whereas the thermal energy that can be used for either uh, direct process applications or for indirectly producing steam or hot water or hot air for drier or chilled water for process cooling so here the main principle is we have to make use of the uh, energy that is being lost along with that the hot gases. Okay, it is leaving the hot gases. 
then <clears throat> there are uh, different technical options for the cogeneration that is the extraction of steam from the uh, back pressure steam turbine okay extraction steam turbine or and then the back pressure steam turbine then the next one is the gas turbine with the heat recovery boiler with or without bottoming the steam turbine then under uh, reciprocating engines with the heat recovery boiler so these are the various options available for uh, cogeneration so as i told you earlier that the cogeneration is nothing but the combined generation of heat and power okay so in short it can be called a chp so now let us see one by one what is that the extraction or back pressure steam turbines so here the specific advantage of using the steam turbine in comparison with the other primer is is option that is using for using a wide variety of the conventional as well as the alternative fuels such as coal natural gas fuel oil and biomass so that is the main advantage of the this uh, steam turbine being used as a prime mover okay so compared to other prime movers that the steam turbine can be make use of because in that the any kind of fuels can be uh, used okay you know, it can be make use of the either conventional or alternative fuels and here you can see that it is a back pressure turbine so back pressure turbine means here the steam is allowed to expand in the turbine fully and then the exhaust steam from the turbine is taken to that for further processing applications and then it is um, passing through that the boiler for again the next cycle of operations so here this is called the back pressure steam turbine okay this is called the back pressure steam turbine whereas here you please see it is extraction conduction steam turbine so extraction conduction steam turbine means here the steam that is allowed to expand in the turbine is partially allowed to expand fully and the for some quantity of the steam is being uh, taken midway okay and it is used for some processing applications so it, that's why it is called the extraction and condensing turbine so here some quantity of the steam is being extracted in the midway of expansion process in the turbine and that is used for some processing applications and the rest of the steam is made to expand fully in the turbine and that after that the exhaust steam from the turbine is being taken to the condenser where it is converted into liquid form and uh, that liquid uh, uh, is again taken to that the pump for uh, pressurization and then it is being supplied to that the, the boiler for further processing application okay for further conversion into steam okay so this is the uh, this type of turbine is called the extraction condenser condensing turbine whereas here it is called the back pressure turbine okay so there are two types of the steam turbines one is called the extraction type uh, con extraction condensing steam turbine one is another one is called the back pressure steam turbines so then the next two type of the option is the gas turbine with the heat recovery boiler so gas turbine as you know that this is called the uh, external combustion engines so why we call this an external combustion engine means uh, here uh, um, even the thermal power plant is also called as the uh, external uh, heat engines because here uh, for uh, compression purposes okay and then the expansion purposes we use the different equipments okay that's why they are called the extraction combustion uh, engines okay so here in the case of the gas turbines so we are making use of the three components one is the compressor and another is the combustion chamber and the next one is the turbine so air is initially drawn from the atmosphere and then it is taken to the compressor okay and where it is compressed to high pressures and here the temperature is also high at the end of the compression process so that hot air at high pressure and high temperature is taken into that the combustion chamber where the fuel is being supplied okay and that the fuel since already the air is at the very high temperature so immediately on injection of the fuel it gets burnt okay and then the hot gases are produced that hot gases are uh, taken out from the combustion chamber and then it is supplied to the turbine so here the gases are undergoing the expansion process and because of that the mechanical energy is being produced in the turbine and since that the turbine is coupled with that the generator okay uh, directly so here that the electrical energy is being produced in the generator and after the expansion process the exhaust gases are leaving out of the turbine 
and they are coming to that the heat recovery generator or we can call it as a heat recovery steam generators so where it is used to okay where it is the water is being supplied okay water is being supplied and that water is being converted into steam and that steam is uh, though the pressure of the steam cannot be much sufficient to produce the electrical power okay uh, whereas uh, that steam is used for some processing applications and after leaving okay after losing the heat to that the water the exhaust gases okay that low temperature is entering into that the atmosphere so here the gas turbine is equipped with the heat recovery boiler for the uh, tapping of heat from the hot exhaust gases okay so this is the another option for uh, again in these two cases we found that the main purpose of the steam power steam power plant steam turbine power plant or the gas turbine power plant is to produce the electricity and then it's uh, and okay another uh, useful option is to tap the heat from the the hot gases okay tap the heat from the hot gases whereas there uh, in the case of the steam turbine that we are uh, extracting the heat from the uh, steam okay for some processing applications okay then next one is that the recirculating engines with the heat recovery boiler so we know very much about the recirculating engine so that is used in uh, car or uh, any heavy vehicles okay so in that cases that we are making use of the reciprocating internal combustion engines why we call it as an internal combustion engine means in the case of the external combustion engine such as um, thermal power plant and the gas turbine power plant for uh, various uh, power processes the different equipments have been used like that is for compression of the air that we are using the compressor and uh, for uh, uh, there is expand for producing mechanical energy that we are using that the turbine so and for combustion of the fuel that we have a combustion chambers so there uh, for every process or for every uh, operations that we use the different components so that's why they are calling us an external combustion engines but here that the compression process and the combustion process and the expansion process of the system everything is taking place inside the engine cylinder that's why they are called as internal combustion engines okay so that internal combustion engine again it is used to produce the uh, mechanical energy okay as a uh, uh, major uh, okay aim and the sub aim is the heat that is um, available from the hot gases that is being used to produce the okay that hot gas is used to produce the steam for some processing applications okay or either to produce not only steam we can uh, get uh, the hot water from the uh, uh, from the exhaust gas heat okay so this is the reciprocating engine cogeneration systems so here the fuel is being stored in the tank and that fuel is being taken into the, the engine okay and here uh, that we are making use of uh, uh, fuel and uh, air is being supplied then that the hot gases are produced on burning and then the hot gases okay it has been used to produce uh, for engine heat recovery okay we are making use of the waters okay engine heat recovery too and okay so at uh, different applications that we are using and here the cold gases is being passed through the heat exchanger and then that uh, takes away the heat from that the hot water from the engine and again that is being converted into hot gases that hot gases are used to take into that the uh, heating of the water so we are producing the hot water and again that the uh, cold air aggregated is being circulated again for uh, another cycle of operations so this is how uh, the reciprocating engine cogeneration systems are in place okay with the heat recovery boilers okay heat recovery boilers is this is the heat recovery boiler and this is the electrical motor and for to produce the electrical energy okay but normally in the case of the vehicles that we are not producing that the electrical energy whereas we are making use of that um, uh, energy produced in the engines for the propelling the vehicles okay this is called the topping cycle cogeneration uh, so we have seen that the principles of the cogeneration now we are going to see that the topping cycle cogeneration systems so first of all let me discuss about what is topping cycle so in a topping cycle the fuel supplied is used to first to produce the power and then the thermal energy which is the by product of the cycle and is used to satisfy the process heat or other thermal requirements 
So topping cycle cogeneration is widely used and is the most popular method of the cogeneration. So normally this uh, topping cycle cogeneration is being employed in um, all thermal power stations and as well as the, the gas turbine power stations. Okay, there we are using that, these uh, cogenerating systems. And uh, in the case of the topping cycle system, so here we are uh, in this uh, topping cycle cogeneration system that I have given uh, the cycle employed in the gas turbine power plant. Okay, so the air from the uh, air from the atmosphere is taken into the, the compressor where it is compressed. Okay, and uh, the power required for compressing the air is uh, or used to uh, the power required to drive the air compressor is obtained from the the gas turbine. Okay, gas turbine power plant, and that the compression process is taking place. So the compressed air is taken into the, the compression chamber where the fuel is being supplied okay and the hot gases so there is a hot air and the the fuel undergoes the burning process and because of that the high temperature high pressure hot gases are produced and that high temperature uh, high pressure hot gases is taken into the, the turbine where it is expanded okay where it is undergoing the expansion process and because of that the mechanical energy is being produced okay and the part of the mechanical energy produced is used to drive the air compressors and the remaining mechanical energy is being used to uh, drive the alternators okay drive the alternator to produce the electricity and then the uh, hot gases okay that is leaving the turbine is taken into that the heat recovery steam generator so where it is used to produce the hot water or the steam in the heat recovery steam generators and after losing the heat the gases is taken away from the heat recovery steam generator and it is passed through that the uh, that is a chimney okay chimney and then it is leaving that the leaving into the atmosphere okay and then whereas here the steam that is being produced in the heat recovery steam generator is used to produce uh, okay if the temperature and the steam pressure is sufficient then it is used to drive the steam turbine of uh, low capacity and thus uh, we can able to produce that the some quantity of uh, power okay and then the hot steam that is leaving the turbine is being taken to that the condenser so where it is being converted into liquid form and that the liquid uh, form of the water is again taken to that the pump where it is uh, pressurized and then the pressurized water again is taken to that the heat recovery steam generator for other applications so here in the case of the condenser the hot gases okay its temperature that is the hot steam that is leaving the turbine will have uh, some heat energy that heat energy is being uh, removed from the water by means of the water that is being circulated to the condenser okay and this circulated water takes away the heat from that the steam so the hot okay this um, uh, cold water takes away the heat and this it becomes hot water and again it is taken to that the cooling tower where it loses its heat to that the the air okay and then this makeup water again is passing through that the condenser for some next cycle of operations so this is called the topping cycle so in the case of the topping cycle the main purpose is to produce the electrical energy and the the uh, steam okay then the next one is that the heat with the help of the steam heat recovery steam generator again that we are producing that some lower quantity of the power and then the oh, okay so the heat energy is being fully extracted from the hot gases okay hot gases and again and again so here mainly it is used for producing the power and also with the help of the heat recovery steam generator also we are producing the power as a byproduct so that's just called the topping cycle cogeneration systems then the uh, in this uh, topping cycle cogeneration systems so there are two types of the uh, topping cycles one is called the combined cycle topping system and another one is called the steam turbine topping system so what does combined cycle topping system means so here uh, the rankine cycle is also being used and as well as the gas turbine cycles is also being used if such two cycles are being used then we can call this as a combined cycle topping system that means that see initially that uh, we can make use of um, 
um, that is uh, either uh, Rankine cycle to produce the electrical energy, and then the hot gases leaving from that the steam power plant is being used to okay they used to, to drive the gas turbine power plant, and uh, you know that the gas turbine power plant is operating based on the Brayton cycle. And this we can call it is a combined cycle topping system. Okay, so where a gas turbine or a diesel engine producing electric or mechanical power followed by a heat recovery boiler to create steam to drive a secondary steam turbine. Okay, this is called the combined cycle topping system. The next one is the steam turbine topping system. So where the second type of steam system burns fuel anytime to produce a high pressure steam, and that then passes through a steam turbine to produce a power which the exhaust provides low pressure process steam. Okay, that's why the, these are the two types of the topping cycles. Okay, combined cycle topping system and this is steam turbine topping system. Then uh, next one is the gas turbine topping system where a natural gas turbine drives a generator. The exhaust gases goes to a heat recovery boiler that breaks the process steam and the process heat. So what we have seen in this diagram, okay, so this is called the gas turbine cogeneration systems or we can call this gas turbine topping system then the last type implies the heat recovery from an engine exhaust and of the jacket cooling system flowing to a heat recovery boiler where it is converted into process steam or hot water for further use these are the four types of the uh, topping cycle cogeneration systems so first one is the Okay, first one is the that is a combined cycle topping system. Next one is the steam turbine topping system. Then next one is the gas turbine topping system. And the last one is that the IC engine topping system. Okay, IC engine topping system. Then uh, next one is called the bottoming cycle cogeneration system. So in the case of the bottoming cycle cogeneration system, our main purpose is to produce the steam for some uh, process applications. And uh, we are producing the power as a byproduct from the power plant. Okay, that's why this is called the bottoming cycle cogeneration system. So here you please see in a bottoming cycle, the primary fuel produces high temperature thermal energy, and the heat ejected from the process is used to generate the power through a recovery boiler and a turbine generator. Okay, so here the diagram shows that it is a um, bottoming cycle cogeneration system. So initially that the we are producing the steam for some processing applications as in the case of the um, that is um, uh, paper industries or in the case of the sugarcane industries okay so the main purpose of um, the power plant is to produce the processing steam okay steam at a high pressure that is used for some processing applications and then the steam that is leaving the processing applications is used to produce the power okay and that power that is being produced in such power plants are not uh, distributed through the distributor line for the commercial usage whereas it is used to uh, meet out the energy demands or energy requirements of the that the own industry okay own industry that's why they are called as a bottoming cycle cogeneration systems so the technical parameters used in the cogeneration are the heat to power ratio okay so the ratio of the thermal energy to electricity required by the energy consuming facility okay so the ratio of thermal energy to the electricity produced or electricity required by the energy consuming facility is called the heat to power ratio okay and uh, so here we have uh, different types of the cogeneration systems okay there is a back process steam turbine then extraction condensing steam turbine and then the gas turbine, then the combined cycle, then reciprocating engine type. So in all these cases, what is the heat to power ratio? So in the back process steam turbine, the heat to power ratio ranging from 4 to 14.3, whereas the power output in kilowatt is 14 to 28 kilowatt. So overall efficiency of the power plant can be enhanced to 84% to 92%. So whereas in the case of the extraction type uh, condensing steam turbine, so the heat to power ratio is only 2 to 10 percent okay uh, 2 to 10 whereas the power output in the range of 22 to 40 kilowatt range and the overall efficiency can be enhanced from 60 to 80 percent so in the case of the gas turbine power plant 
okay the heat to power ratio is 1.3 to 2 and the uh, power output in kilowatt is 24 to 35 kilowatt and the overall efficiency ranging between 70 to 85 percent so whereas in the case of um, uh, this combined cycle power plant okay combined cycle power plant the heat to power ratio is 1 to 1.7 and the power output in kilowatt is 34 to 40 and the overall efficiency ranges between uh, 69 to 83 percent whereas in the case of a reciprocating engine so the heat to power ratio is uh, from 1.1 to 2.5 and the power output from that uh, reciprocating engine cogeneration system is 33 to 53 kilowatt and the overall efficiency can be uh, from uh, 75 to 85 percent so these are the various primers uh, used for the cogeneration so already i have discussed about this so here some more informations can be heard from it so in the case of the back pressure steam turbine the steam exits the turbine at high pressures than the atmospheric okay the leaving steam from the turbine will be at high pressures so that high pressure steam okay so it is used for some um, applications okay that is for some processing applications and then it is used for recycling okay recycling process so the major advantages of the back pressure steam turbine is it is a simple configuration and a low capital cost and a low need of uh, that is a low need of uh, cooling water and high total efficiency so the disadvantage is that the larger steam turbine okay larger steam turbine the next one is the uh, extraction conduction type uh, steam turbine so here the steam obtained by extraction from an intermediate stage so remaining steam is exhausted okay exhausted at the end of the expansion process so relatively it requires high capital cost and a lower total efficiency okay whereas in the case of the back process steam turbine it is a simple configuration and it requires that the steam turbine will be of the larger in size but it doesn't require any major investment okay because uh, it is there every time, <laughs> everywhere. <coughs> so this is the extraction condensing type steam turbines. Then uh, we can have a gas turbine as a prime mover. So the diagram that we already seen also. So that is the air from the atmosphere is drawn into the compressor, and it is a high pressure at a temperature air is taken into that the combustion chamber, or we can call this compressor, where the fuel is being admitted and the air and fuel undergoes the combustion process and because of that uh, high pressure and high temperature hot gas are being produced and that is allowed to expand in the turbine okay that is ex allowed to expand in the turbine so during the expansion process uh, the mechanical energy is being produced that mechanical energy is being converted into electrical energy by connecting the generator with them and then the hot gases that is the living turbine is taken into that the heat recovery steam generator where the water is supplied and the water gets heated up and because of the steam is produced that steam is used for some processing applications and then the condensed water from the process is taken okay and then condensed water is again circulated into the heat recovery steam generator for further extraction of the heat from the water and then the, after losing the heat to that the water the gases are let into that the ambient so this is the gas turbine as a prime mover so the, the next one is the respiratory engine as a prime mover so that we already discussed about this also okay so here the uh, engine is there and the engine here the fuel is supplied and the air is also supplied and then the air and the fuel is undergoing the compression process during the compression stroke and then the power is produced and then uh, there is a mechanical energy is produced that mechanical energy is undergoing the expansion process during the uh, sorry the hot gas are produced that hot gases are used to uh, okay, convert the heat energy into mechanical energy. That mechanical energy is being converted into electric energy by means of connecting the generator. So electricity is output is taken there. And here for um, maintaining the stability of the engine, the water is circulated. Okay, water is circulated through the engine jackets. So that water is taking uh, absorbing the heat from the engine surfaces and thus it become a hot water that hot water is taken into that the heat recovery or uh, unit or the steam generator where the steam is produced and then the okay and then 
the hot water of the steam output is taken into the absorption chiller and then the heat is after removing that uh, heat okay and again the water is being produced and it is pressurized and it's again taken to that the uh, engine jackets for absorbing the heat okay so this is one kind of uh, uh, this is one kind of uh, heat absorption and then the exhaust gases will be in the high temperatures so that is taken into the, the duct burner okay where the accelerated fuel is being supplied and this again the hot gas are being produced okay the high temperature hot gas are being produced and that is again it is passing through the heat recovery unit okay where the heat is uh, heat is uh, in the exhaust gas are fully absorbed and then the hot gases are again taken to that the desiccant system where, where again another axillary fuel is being input and okay so dry air is also admitted and and that is being okay that is a moist air is being supplied here and that moisture in the air is being removed so only the dry air is supplied okay and here the burning process is taking place and again it is and then the exhaust gases are let into the, the atmosphere okay so like that uh, we are making use of uh, the respiratory engine as a prime mover in the cogeneration systems so these are the relative merits of the cogeneration systems there is a variant and uh, advantages and disadvantages so variant means uh, the different types of the cogeneration systems so first in the organ is the back pressure steam turbine so the main advantage is the high fuel efficiency rating because from the same fuel that more amount of energy is being recovered so that is why we call it as a high fuel efficiency rating and the disadvantage is the uh, little flexibility in design and the operations the next one is the steam turbine and the fuel firing in a boiler so it is a simple plant and well suited to low quality fuels so because in the case of the steam turbine plant we can make use of any kind of fuels okay and that is it can be uh, from lignite to the anthracite or uh, so bituminous coals okay that can be burned so uh, uh, coals of the different uh, uh, calorific value can be burned in the uh, thermal power plant okay that's why we call it as a steam turbine and a fuel firing and boiler and but it requires a more capital investment but low fuel efficiency rating and a high cooling water demand and a more impact on the environment because of the hot gases are let into the atmosphere and the high civil construction cost due to the complicated foundations and the next one is the gas turbine with the waste heat recovery boiler it is a good fuel efficiency simple plant lower civil construction cost less delivery period less impact on the environment high flexibility in the operations because the mainly gas turbines power plants are making use of the gaseous fuels okay so gaseous fuels so since the gaseous uh, that is fuel is available in the gaseous form so there can be a better combustion process and because of the improved combustion so the hot gases uh, that is uh, um, will be of a uh, high quality and thus uh, it requires a very simple uh, construction cost and here the major disadvantage is that the moderate part load efficiency at full load its efficiency is good whereas at the part load it, the efficiency will be moderate and a limited suitability for low quality fuels because only we can make use of only the gaseous fuels in the gas turbine power plant and for other form of the fuels this gas point power plant is not suitable that's why it has given limited suitability for low quality fuels then next one is that the it is a combined gas and steam power plant with the water heat recovery boiler so it is a optimum fuel efficiency rating and a low relatively relative capital cost less generation period uh, sorry gestation period and a quick start up and a stoppage stoppage and less impact on the environment high flexibility in the operations so but the only thing is that it is average to moderate power load efficiency so limited suitability for the low quality fuels similar to the gas turbine power plant okay then the next one it is a diesel engine and a waste heat recovery boiler and the cooling water heat exchangers so this one uh, doesn't find the major applications only in the case of um, uh, diesel engine that is employed to produce uh, uh, power in the uh, multiplexes okay 
so there we can get some additional energy from the engines whereas um, uh, in the case of the conventional uh, that is in the uh, from uh, that is um, uh, that is the engines used in the vehicles cannot be used for the power generation systems okay so it is a low civil construction cost due to um, block foundations and the least number of axillaries and high power efficiency so better suitability as a standby power source that's why i am telling okay it is a better suitability only as a standby power source so it's a lower low disadvantages or low overall efficiency so limited suitability for the low quality fuels availability of a low temperature steam and highly maintenance prone okay because it requires a major uh, uh, its running cost is more than the investment costs so these are the different merits and demerits of the core generation systems that is being employed then the next one is that the applications of the core generation systems so as i told uh, said earlier the core generation systems are much familiar in the case of uh, the processing industries like uh, petrochemicals fertilizers sugar industries textile industries paper industries and then the may made fiber pharmaceuticals and drugs and food and dairy farms and district heating and cooling for, okay uh, occasions then the hotels hospitals shopping complexes software technology parks so there they are employing the cogeneration systems so mainly that the cogeneration systems are employed in the processing industries but also nowadays in, it is being uh, applicable in the uh, power plants too okay power plants too so with that let me come to the end of the um it is a power generation systems that has been used in uh, various uh, applications okay so once again we will uh, quickly uh, uh, see that the contents of the um, power generation system so the what we have seen that what is a power generation system power generation system means it is a combined generation of the heat and the power and it has been found applications in the power plants okay thermal power plants and as well as the uh, other power plants the gas turbine power plants even nuclear power plants also they are uh, employing that the power generation systems okay and then we have seen that what are the two different uh, cycles uh, one is called the topping cycles and another one is called the watering cycles so topping cycles means where the primary job is to produce the electrical energy and uh, okay and the secondary uh, product from the power plant is to produce the steam for some processing applications and then the next one is that the um, uh, okay and then the next one is the watering cycles so in the watering cycle our main uh, aim is to produce the processing steam for some processing applications and then the by product of the uh, steam is used to produce the electrical power okay so that's why that all those are the two types of the cycles employed in the cogeneration system and uh, there are many types of the prime movers are being used in the uh, cogeneration system one is the steam turbine prime mover and another one is the gas turbine prime mover and third one is the resorting engine prime mover so again in the case of the steam turbine prime mover that we are using two types of the steam turbines one is called the back pressure steam turbine and another is called the extraction condensing type steam turbines okay and we also make use of the gas turbine prime mover and also the extraction type the prime mover and we also we have seen that um, the applications of the cogeneration systems okay so i hope that you you can uh, understand the different concepts of the cogeneration and also that the different equipments used for the cogeneration applications so thank you very much for your patience here so in the next uh, uh, class that we will discuss about uh, uh, the waste heat recovery systems okay uh, thank you for your patience here